Three. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's guest. He's like, a, like an entrepreneurial, crazy genius, but real estate related too. But before we talk to our guests, our guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co host. You know him, you love him, the professor, the brain. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm great. I, I really feel like I can really die in peace now knowing that I got you in some way addicted to coffee because you're always like the Diet Coke guy and yeah. you finally went full into and this is how it starts you start with like little sugary coffee drinks and yeah. eventually you go black yeah i'll tell you when um you know it's pretty bad when um like last night i went out and got one and then i had a little bit of a break today midday and i'm like it's a little cold outside go off and get one i did marry it though mark i married it with my diet coke i got a diet coke and the coffee I'm missing the fact that the, that the coffee's already gone. So bad, bad habit, but uh, it's all on you. Well, speaking of good habits, how about somebody that gets, I can't say it, the S word, the SH I word done. This is a kid-friendly show. Yeah. So you know who the, the ship done, man. Ship. He, S-H-I-P. He gets, get the ship he, done. He gets the shirt done. Okay. I'm with you. Well, I, I always say with my kids, get school done, right? He gets, yeah, he gets school done. <laughs> it's Josh Smith. If you don't know Josh Smith, you've probably heard him. You've probably heard of his podcast, uh, GSD Mode Podcast. But if, if you don't know about Josh, um, he's been featured in the Wall Street Journal, Journal Forbes, Inc. Magazine. He's top 1% of realtors worldwide. He was voted the 30th top realtor in America by the Wall Street Journal. He sold over 5,000 homes. He's the host of the number one most downloaded real estate agent podcast. He's coached, mentored thousands of realtors all over the world. And he's a husband to an amazing, straight up badass wife. And he's got a, and he's a father to absolutely three awesome kids. I don't know his kids. I don't know if his wife is a badass. I'm sure she is if she's married to Josh. Josh Smith, how are you? Uh, hey, no, I'm doing great, man. It's an honor to be on the show. Thank you for having me. I, I'm so, so glad to have you. And, um, you know, you're not just a realtor. Let's, let's kind of walk us through the number of businesses you have and how they operate. Yeah, so um, right now today I've got uh, five, five total companies. Um, over the years, you know, I've been on this entrepreneur journey for just over 13 years and uh, I've had uh, 10 total companies throughout the years and, and have been able to sell and exit from, from numerous of those. And, uh, but yeah, today, five total companies, all but one is tied to the real estate space. I have a uh, one that's a health and fitness supplement company, um, but everything else is tied to real estate. Okay. So what are those real estate companies? So I've got my, uh, my real estate, uh, uh, residential real estate company, you know, which you, you talked about in the intro there, um, which all started from, you know, I started this journey when I was 23 years old. I, I wanted to go open up my own health club. And uh, 23 years old, college dropout, no credit, no money to my name. And I needed an $800,000 loan. And uh, I couldn't get the loan. So I was like, well, I need to go bank some, some money and raise some capital. It's 2005, Phoenix, Arizona. Everybody in real estate was making a ton of money. So I'm like, well, I love sales. I, I love people and I like to work, right? So I'm like, I'll jump into to real estate and um, raise the capital to, to at least for the down payment for the loan. And, and uh, was, so this was just supposed to be a stepping stone to the vehicle to go open up my own health club. And um, very quickly, I, I, I fell massively in love with the real estate industry. I always say that health clubs and health and fitness industry is my passion. Real estate is my obsession. And uh, so a lot of this, you know, none of this was really intentional, to be honest, you know, right? Uh, it's just kind of just kind of happened, right? So, um, but I fell in love with real estate and just kept trucking, trucking, trucking. And, and uh, you know, next thing you know, I need an assistant. And next thing you know, I need buyer's agents. And then you fast forward 13 years later today, I've got eight, 82 agents that work exclusively for me. And um, um, you know, an amazing admin team. And that's just really what's led to these other ventures, you know, um, you know, like the coaching and consulting company, never thought in a million years I'd get into coaching and consulting. But as I started having success in, in 
my own real estate career and getting asked to speak and, and being published in certain magazines and podcasts, the domain was just there. And uh, people just kept asking for, for advice and for that mentorship. And, um, and that led into uh, my 90 Day Mastery Bootcamp program, which is an online digital program. And, you know, so I'm launching that, doing that. And uh, there became a need for a specific type of software and uh, couldn't figure out a solution for my coaching clients. And so we went out there and created the software. Now we, our software is all over the United States and Canada. We have over 2000 users on our software and just exploding and growing. And, and so it, each of these is just kind of led to the next. Yeah. I love it. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Oh, Scott, you're on mute. Sorry. Sound, sounds familiar with the software, doesn't it, Mark? It, it does sound familiar. <laughs> Yeah, it's, fun. it's funny because, um, you know, I think that, I think it's interesting to see how things evolve, right? Like, you, you know, like, I'm sure Josh, that you, you didn't set out with like, man, I'm gonna go create software, I'm gonna create all these boot camps, I'm gonna create all this stuff. And it kind of evolves into that piece because you start, you start trying to help people and then helping people is kind of a funny thing because it's kind of a slippery slope, right? Like, you go out there, you, you start helping people, and then all of a sudden, people might think, like, oh, look, look, you're kind of sleazy, slimy. But how is that when you start off with the intent of just helping people to help them? You know, and, and it's kind of cool to see your evolution, um, kind, of, kind of where you were actually the realtor and then kind of let it, let it full circle. So what, what do you see as, like, some of the um, kind of the challenges that people have in it going? Like, you, you know, is it? I mean, for me, I see a lot of people that don't have a lot of like self-confidence or, you know, belief that they can go do it. Is that something that you see or do you see something else? Yeah. I mean, I think if you were to, to, you know, break it down to the, the, the most minute thing that holds people back, it probably is just like you said, a, a limited belief, you know, of some sorts of, of that they're different. I mean, I, I, I used to be there to an extent. Like I remember when I first got into real estate, looking at these, these real estate, you know, gods, if you will, right? Like the, the top of the top and putting them on pedestals and, and truly thinking that they were different, right? Truly thinking that they had something I didn't, or they had some type of a, you know, I don't know, unique genetic code or, or whatever. But a, a, as you start creating success, you realize over, over the years that look, I mean, they're, they're nobody, they're no different than you or I or anybody else, right? They're just people that are willing to uh, just keep pushing no matter what, you know, we all go through the ups and downs and you know, so, so yeah, I mean, I would agree with the limiting beliefs. Um, but then from there, I think it's, it's just the preparation. Like, like you, you gotta be prepared. It, business is, I mean, it's, it's filled with ups and downs, you know, right. And you've got to be mentally prepared for, for those challenges that are kind of going to come along the way. I, I've yet to meet any successful self-made entrepreneur that, um, you know, hasn't went through hell and back to create what they've created. And I think that that's one, one, you know, false belief out there is, that their path was different, you know, right. Or, or whatever, but it's like, man, there's, there's, if I, if I could identify uber successful people and, and if you study like the greats, like an Elon Musk, for example, right. So his book by Ashley Vance, uh, Elon Musk's book uh, is such a brilliant book, you know, right. So he goes out there, creates PayPal, gets his, you know, 225 million, starts SpaceX, starts Tesla, just flops on all of it, loses everything for clothes on his house, sleeping on his buddy's couch, his wife leaves him, divorces him, takes the kids, you know, on the 11th hour a VC fund comes in and kind of saves the company and, and he was able to take on from there. But, you know, so that, that one superpower, if you will, though, is, is just the ability to endure way more pain than, than anybody else or, or than most people. I, I think people w would, I think we're all capable of during the pain. You know, you just, you just got to be in a business for the right reasons. You got to have that obsession where it's, you know, you're so committed that you're willing to go through whatever it takes to go out there and create it. And uh, if you're willing to do that um, and, and you have the mindset and you have the understanding that pain and power come from the same place, man, it just, uh, um, you know, it can, it can be an amazing ride. Yeah, I love that. And really, you know, you're kind of getting to what the essence of purpose is, right? So when your purpose is so much bigger than you, you're absolutely willing to go through all that pain. And, and I think that's where that, you know, that fundamentally needs to start. Um, and, you know, referencing Elon Musk, like, hey, I want to, you know, save the planet. That's a pretty big purpose um, yeah. to, to definitely go through. What, what's interesting about your entrepreneurial journey to me, Josh, is that, you know, I've got friends who are realtors and being a realtor can be great, right? And I mean, essentially, um, you can kind of make your own hours. You don't have to necessarily, you don't feel like you have a boss, right? There's, it's, it's, you can feel like an entrepreneur, 
uh, in some respects. The, the problem I, th- I see, and maybe I'm wrong, is that if a realtor is not getting listings or showing houses, they're not going to make any commissions, right? Um, so there is some type of sole economic dependency. How did you sort of cross that threshold from having sole economic dependency into creating passive income, building this, this um, agency, if you will, where you're making money now and not, you're not the one having to show houses? Yeah, you know, so for me, I've, I've always been, um, you know, I've, from day one, I knew I wanted to become a business owner. And, and, and you hit the nail on the head with, with real estate agents. And this is, this isn't nothing to do with real estate. This is just business, you know, right? Like you could be an AC contractor and, you know, most small business owners don't have a business. According to the IRS, they do, but they, they have a job, you know, right? Uh, um, you don't have a business until you can step away from it and have it still operating without your involvement, right? So, um, um, so yeah, I always had the desire to go out there and create a business. My, my father owned and operated health clubs for 30 years, right? I grew up, you know, an entrepreneur family and, and witnessing that. And I knew that that was always something I wanted to do, which was, which was a blessing. You know, I, when I got into real estate, I always looked at it from that lens and, um, you know, but you got to do it right. You know, it's, it's one of these things where with all business, I know a lot of people that want to get into business, want to become that business owner. Uh, but man, you got to be very methodical and you got to be smart with it. I mean, there's going to be an element of that grind, of that hustle. And I also think that that's so critical, right? Because the only way that you can go out there and, and develop a business is to have something built on amazing processes and systems that you can plug other people into that they can go out there and follow. Well, the only way that you can build epic, amazing processes and systems um, is by really being in the trenches yourself and knowing exactly how you want it done. You know, actually, I've got this right here. This is uh, from my real estate company. You know, here, here's our playbook, right, for our real estate agents. And everything in here, I mean, step by step, there's not one thing that uh, anybody in our organization doesn't know how to do. We've got it. You know, we've got our manuals. We've got online training about it. But we can bring a brand new agent fresh out of school, put them through our platform, and in day one, they're able to, to plug into world-class, like world-class presentation, buyer presentation, whatever it is. Um, and it's, it's so funny because I, I consult a lot of entrepreneurs from other spaces and you, know, you constantly hear the, all the my, my biggest challenge is, is finding great people, you know, right? And, and whenever I hear that, I'm like, all that's telling me is that your systems and processes are absolutely terrible, you know? Um, so, uh, you know, it took me about seven full years before I was 100% out of production. Now, knowing what I know now, I could probably do it in two or three um, uh, but, uh, uh, it was, it was that slow methodical growth of getting the system, the processes and identifying the right people in place, um, um, where you could eventually exit, but you got to have that vision of, of what that looks like and, and build it right from the ground up. Uh, yeah, a- absolutely. Absolutely. Scott Todd, you're shaking your head. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a process, right? Like Mark, we, we talk about it all the time. We talk about like the 30 X, the 30 X rule in terms of um, when you bring someone on, you know, especially in the beginning, you need to be prepared to spend 30 X the time it takes you to do the job yourself. You, you need to be able to invest that time or be willing to invest that time because essentially what will happen is if you invest that time, you're going to get people that are, that are able to do it or capable of doing it. You're going to do what Josh just said. Like you're going to be able to, to create these documents or these processes. It's going to be able to lay it out there. You should be able to take an untrained person and just insert them into the business and let them, let them go. But, you know, it takes time and it takes you kind of chipping away at it ever so slowly. But once you have it, it's a great thing. Yeah, and what a new place to start. I mean, and today's with technology, it's so brilliant, right? Because between YouTube and Google Drive and Trello, Trello free, you know, you can create all of this and create it as you're doing it, you know, right? But anytime you have a win in your business, whether it's it's something that just went right, you know, like with with in the Land Geek when you're when you're submitting out your offers or whatever that looks like, just document every step what you, of what you're doing. You know, create checklists around it. Anything online, you can you can create the do a screen share and create it and explain it as you're doing it. Then you create a video library and you have this stuff documented, you know, eventually you have a full library of your whole business from A to Z that's documented. And, and uh, so it doesn't really have to take that much more effort. You just have to have that intention of doing it. But, you know, yeah, I mean, it all comes down to, I'm, I'm a systems and processes freak, right? Uh, um, you know, I love data. I love numbers and I love systems and processes. Uh, 
And it wasn't always that way, but once I discovered the power of business and really that's what drives a business, you know, I, I developed that love for it. But also the same thing comes from what you just mentioned about, um, yeah, taking somebody that has no experience, which I do all the time in our, in our business or any of our businesses. Um, but you also have to have the right process and systems for hiring. Yeah, right. Like not everybody is resourceful enough or has the capability to take on every role, right? So you've got to know how to identify the right talent. And what I would say my biggest mistake, my biggest regret, if I could go back and give myself any piece of advice from when I started my businesses, um, would have been to master the hiring process early on. You know, I mean, it took me about a decade of, 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 of not spending the time to really master the hiring process. And it's probably cost me millions of dollars over the years, you know, right? Um, so you got, you got to learn how to hire right and have those system processes to plug the right people in. Yeah, I mean, you know, what's your philosophy when it comes to hiring? So my philosophy is hire fast, hire, if you want one, one job, let's say it's a, for a virtual assistant, you hire three, you keep one. So hire fast, fire fast, but that's, you know, in, a, in sort of a, a, a more task-oriented role, something that's more involved and is, has uh, much more value you might say, you know, really take your time and hire slowly. Do they fit into the culture? What's, what's your philosophy with that? Yeah. So, you know, it, it, man, it becomes very difficult. And the reason I say it becomes difficult is, you know, I'm not Apple computers, right? So I can't spend 18 months finding that right hire. Like a lot, I mean, with, with my businesses and some of my businesses more so than others, I mean, there, there's not a week that goes by that we're not having to hire somebody new because we, we're, we're just growing so fast. Um, and we don't have months and months and months to wait. So we've had to identify uh, uh, the most effective ways that we can to, to hire great talent in the quickest way we possibly can. Um, so, you know, it can take, I mean, maybe two weeks between beginning to end of, of a hiring process for us. Um, um, I mean, if, we don't, if we're not confident in the hire, we'll take as long as it takes to find that right person. You know, but then from there, man, again, it comes down to systems and, and it really comes down to the systems, right? It is. I don't believe in managing people. When, when you have the systems dialed in, you manage the systems that manage and empower your people. Um, and then you can inspect what you expect. So it makes it like, I'm not going to sit here and say, I never get hiring wrong, but I know it instantaneously. Like you just talked about a VA, right? So for me, I'm going to have a series of checklists. I'm going to have it where, where it's, it's, you know, the, where things just, everything is QC. Yeah, right. Where I don't have to micromanage them. They can go work their eight hour day. I might have to oversee what they've done for 15 minutes at the end of the day. Right. Um, but we, we all know what winning or losing looks like on a, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Um, and that, that way eliminates a lot of that risk. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm in a position where, where yeah, I've got to hire pretty fast and unfortunately sometimes I got to fire fast. Um, you know, but we, we were able to identify that quickly. We don't have a dud, you know, that, that's, that's riding with us for four months. We know if they're a dud like week one, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Scott Todd, I, I love your, your hiring philosophy. You want to tell Josh? Uh, my hiring philosophy? Like, well, what the, what you, your system is like beautiful. Well, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out there and I'm kind of going to put them to a test, right? Put them to a test from, from the get-go. And then, um, you know, th they're going to go through a series of, of basically, they're going to jump through hoops, right? They're going to go through a test. Can they do kind of some of the stuff? For example, on a salesperson, I want to see if they follow up, right? I want to see if they're persistent. So I'm going to drag them out there just like a customer would. And then it's amazing how many people will, who are supposedly in sales who are persistent, who will follow up with you like three times and they'll give up. Well, that's not the person that I want. What I want is I want someone who's going to stalk me, right? Like text me, call me, do all of the stuff that I would want them to do on a, on actual sales. And so I delay them out there. I put them out there and I try, I try to create these tests for people to go and do it. And then once I, once I have them, then what I'm doing is I'm giving them a series of little tests, right? You know, like to, to onboard them. So for example, like I, for people that are doing due diligence for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I have a case study already created. I know what the answers are, right? Like it's a test. I tell them, okay, listen, here's the, here's the way it's going to work. I'm going to give you, um, I want you to go do, do, do due diligence on this particular property. So they go and they do it and they bring it back to me. And I, I've already done the due diligence on this property. Everybody that starts to do due diligence for me, they start here. So I know the answers. I know what I'm looking for. I know good from bad. And it's not like I got to say, well, it looks pretty good to me. I give them the same kind of a test 
And then from there, if they're good, or I think I can work with them and kind of mold them into what I want, now we're talking. But if they're a train wreck, if, if they're sales and they don't keep following up with me, and I delay them, I'm like, hey, yeah, listen, man, I'm in a call right now, call me back in like an hour, and I'll, I'll hang up, I'll mark the, the phone number, like don't, don't answer it, goes to voicemail, are they leaving me a message, are they hitting me the next day, are they texting me, hey, whatever, are they following up with me, are they doing what they said they're going to do, and you'll hear me, I, Mark, I, I was amazed, man, like a guy told me, he was like, the, he's like, I'm like, what's the quality about you, he's like, I'm the best, uh, most persistent person around, I'm like, cool, he gave up after four attempts, well, what are you talking about, man, why weren't you showing up to my house? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Josh, what do you believe is normal or wise or cool that other people think is crazy? Oh man. I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the thing that I get the most negative feedback on, you know, right from, from the podcast and whatever is, uh, you know, the, the work ethic that I have, you know, right. Um, and one thing I always think is crazy is like, look, people will go out there and worship a, 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 like a LeBron James of the world, right? That's out there grinding. And, and it's it, for entrepreneurs, if we go out there and, and work our butts off, right? And, and grind and, and put in the hours that we do, uh, um, you know, we get criticized very heavily for it. Of, oh, you're going to miss out on life. You need to slow down. You know, like all, all the, you know, the things that people say out there. Um, but if we were professional athletes or whatever and chasing our dreams, then it's socially acceptable. Yeah, right. Where where it's like, look, we're just out there building our dreams and chasing our dreams. And and that is that's probably the craziest thing I think is is from the entrepreneur standpoint is how difficult it is and how much uh, a negativity that that's surrounded around that work ethic and even getting buy-in from your family members and your greatest friends on on you know what you're doing and what you're creating, you know, right? Uh, um, you know, it's it's pretty damn comical. Yeah, I mean, you know, your work ethic reminds me of like a Gary V. Or a, or a Grant Cardone and, and those guys um, sort of are, you know, they probably get the same type of, um, you know, criticism where, where you have other people saying, hey, look, you know, on, on your deathbed, right, are you going to really say, I wish I worked more, right? But if what you're doing doesn't feel like work and it's a purpose bigger than you and it's trying to achieve something bigger than you, then why not? Right. Yeah. So um, if you love it, then you're loving your life. You know, I mean, for me, like, I'm never going to retire. I, I look at people, you know, use marketing and they're like, oh, I'm on the golf course. You know, and like, no, that doesn't, I mean, it's great for them. I'm not going to judge, but it's not, that's not how I want to spend my days. Um, just relaxing. I, I always want to be adding value. Right. Scott Todd, what about you? Yeah. Yep. So you're going to keep hustling, Mark. You're going to keep out there, uh, keep, keep it going, huh? Well, look, every day I'm hustling. <laughs> every day I'm hustling, man. You got to do every the dance. I mean, I, I mean, but for me, the, the hustle is like, like for Josh, like can I create systems? Can I create processes that get me more time, right? So I don't want to just be so economic dependent. I don't want to work, you know, really, really hard just – to say, hey, I worked an 80 hour week this week, like, like, a, like an attorney, like it's some, you know, badge of honor. I want to say I worked really, really hard so that I can, you know, don't have to work hard for, <laughs> on, on that, for the rest of my life, right? Mark, it's funny because um, we're, we're recording this on a Tuesday and um, on f last Friday, uh, Friday to Monday. So over that four day period, we sold eight properties with an enterprise value of over a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Um, right. while all of that was taking place, literally I was on a cruise ship. Okay. Uh, on, on Saturday when, um, uh, like two of the sales was taking place, I'm sitting at a rustic Mexican, uh, restaurant, <laughs> on the Caribbean Sea, enjoying margaritas and lunch and family. I don't even know what's going on out there, right? It's just happening, it's just flowing. And then I got off the boat yesterday to, to find that, kind of get an update on a Monday morning. Hey, we sold, we sold uh, f uh, five properties at that point. 
and we're working on closing three more that'll be done today. We ended up selling eight properties. And my, my time invested in those was absolutely zero. And so, you know, if you're going to go out and you're going to create processes and you're going to create systems, you're going to create teams to go do the work. Well, then ultimately now you're just running the playbook and that's not really a lot of, a lot of time, a lot of work. It's not like you're out there slaving away and doing the job. You're, you're, you're being the, the investor, which is, I think what we're all kind of working towards being is kind of be the investor in this business and let the thing run on its own. And then I think you have the, the best of to retire, I mean, look at Warren Buffett. The guy's an investor, and all he does is sit in his office all day and read. So it's kind of cool to see. You know, that's what Josh has done with his businesses. It's kind of what what we're talking about here. And so, what 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 are you trying to achieve? And and go go do it. Yeah, right, right. right. This is where you know, in in the beginning, when in any business, right? Um, and you talked about like Gary Vee, right? He's he's always talking about hustle and grind, and and, and there's an element where that is absolutely necessary, right? But it very quickly can it start off being your greatest virtue, but then become your greatest vice if you're not careful, you know, right? Where, where it's like what the three of us do today isn't necessarily hustle and grind, you know, right? It, it's, it's a different style when I'm talking about work that we're doing at this point, you know, right? A lot of it is just thinking over strategy. A lot of it is self-development, thinking big vision, big picture. So, which is which the great part about it. And now, this really comes down to just getting clarity on what is that you want, what is that you honor. You know, when you talked about earlier, Mark, about, uh, you know, getting what your, what your um, you know, your wire purpose is. Because I'm a guy that I've never really had a wire purpose, right? Like, I don't, uh, um, I don't have some defined, you know, crystal clear why other than in this game of, of life, I want to be able to reflect and just be like, look, you know, I, I did everything I could to grow and expand in my full potential as a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a person, as an entrepreneur. Uh, um, and that's it, right? So, um um, so I, I don't. I don't think that's a bad why, Josh. Yeah, that's so, that's continual growth and improvement, which means like you know, if you ever saw that Netflix documentary, Jiro Dreams of Sushi, this guy is always trying to get better every single day, knowing he's never going to get to the top of the mountain. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's, it's phenomenal. No finish line, man. You know, it's, it's no finish uh, line. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't, I can't fathom like retirement is probably the curse word in my dictionary, right? Uh, um, you know, I could, I could have technically retired about five years ago, you know, right? But I'm like, well, what are you gonna do? You know, right? Now, now we just gonna create things, and, and I guess it is a different element of again, in the beginning, yeah, you're doing a lot of things that you don't enjoy doing, but then you're able to delegate a lot of those things out as you build this, this over time the right way. Um, but then you get to focus and, and do the things that you really love doing, and, and focus on those on the highest possible level. Yeah, absolutely. So Josh, we're at that point now in the podcast where we're going to put you on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Uh, so, so tip of the week um, is, uh, you know, I know as entrepreneurs, a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs sit there and think it's, it's funny or, or, you know, whatever to, to, to say that they're impatient. And I, I get that we can all be impatient people. Um, but learn to be patient, learn to play the long game, right? Don't, don't try to be growing after sprints, especially if you want that true wealth to create true wealth and true passive income. Like, like you gotta be patient. You gotta be willing to, to invest for that long game. Um, that, that's, uh, you know, would be one of my biggest tips overall for business. Um, uh, uh, what was the other one? A website? Well, you know, you know, I mean, just that, that can be your tip. If you want to do another okay. tip, that's cool. Great. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good, that's a good one. Play, play the long game, you know, think long term. Don't go for the short, quick, easy fix. I yeah. like that. Everybody's, everybody's chasing six minute abs, man. They just don't exist. Six minutes. Exactly. Exactly. Do you ever watch the movie Step Brothers? Yeah. I mean, a long time ago. Uh, yeah. He shows like, he's like, I haven't had a carb in eight years. This is what I live with. And they show like a six pack. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Wait, Scott. You're Mark, check, check out uh, bluetick.io, bluetick.io. And this thing is pretty dang cool because what, what you can do is imagine like your autoresponder series. Is it T-I-K or T-I-C-K? T-I-C-K, blue tick. Dot uh, I-O. Imagine like your autoresponder series. Okay. And um, the, the thing is, is that what it does is, 
think of like combine that with like a bot, if you will, one that will look at kind of the responses and you can, you can create kind of custom responses. So let's say I send an email and it's, and someone replies back and says these keywords, well then it would just go ahead and respond back with this stuff. So it kind of like automates your responses. It's pretty cool. I started playing with it um, on a trial and it's pretty dang cool. It's kind of like a, a warm follow-up process email, but at scale. Okay. So it's like a bot where I can then program the bot based uh -huh. on this response to this email. Yeah. If these words are in it. So for example, my keyword would be, would be land moto. Right. Your, your email would reply automatically back. Are you interested in land moto? Kind of. Yeah. It's, you can personalize it to each prospect within seconds. Uh, you, you can walk, you can walk leads through the sales process. It, it becomes kind of like this painless thing. It's pretty dang cool what they're doing with it. All right, I'm going to get it. That's it. Check it out. I mean, it's just check it out. Don't get it or just check it out? Check, check it out. I mean, like you can get it, but check it out first. See if it's a good fit for you. All right. All right, great. Well, my tip of the week is get shirts done. Go to the gsdmode.com and listen to how Josh gets it done. Um, it's a great podcast and, um, you know, truly for those Grant Cardone fans, Gary V fans, you got to have Josh Smith in your repertoire of people that are going to motivate you every single day to, to think bigger, to be better, to act more boldly you like that. That's the new BBB baby. Josh Smith way of doing. So gsdmo.com is my tip of the week. Uh, Josh, are we good? I think we're good. It's been a Scott, lot of fun. Oh, good, good. Scott, are we good? Yeah, we're good, Mark. Well, I want to thank all the listeners, and I want to remind you, the only way, the only way we're going to have the quality of guests, like a Josh Smith from gsdmode.com, is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit today's podcast is sponsored by flight school learn more about flight school just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training schedule a free strategy call see if flight school is going to be a good fit for you i want to thank everybody and let freedom ring, ring. thanks everybody <laughs>